application tethering. Now, I'll, I'll make... I'll make an assumption that maybe some of you are not familiar with application tethering, so I'm going to just spend a few minutes explaining what is application tethering and what can you do with it. So first, app tethering was introduced in XE8 as a way to extend your VCL and FireMonkey desktop apps to other companion apps. And these companion apps, they could be Windows apps, Mac OS X, and or FireMonkey multi-device apps. So like we see on this on this slide here, we had an existing uh, Windows VCL app that was a database, and we created this nice mobile companion app to, to allow us to remotely add new orders to the database or or uh, or create create new orders. Uh, a nice FireMonkey app that scanned photos, and then you can use a, a remote companion app to to take the photo and then pass it to your you know, your central database to do uh, employee badging. So what's nice about app tethering is you can provide you can provide very proper and safe exchange of both streams and data messages between between apps. And and with app tethering, you can also execute remote actions like pressing a button remotely or moving a track bar remotely. Now, in XE8 for app tethering, we added additional protocol enhancements, and we added these real cool event handlers for hooks to add your own encryptions to the streams and the data that's being sent between the connected apps. So to the tethering app profile, we added these four new events. There's a on after receive data, on after receive stream, on before send data, and on before uh, send stream. So now you can use these events on two or more sides of the app tethering communication channels that when you get a stream or you get some data, you can do processing on the stream or the data and encrypt the stream or, or the data and then decrypt the stream or the data on the other end. So the conversations in app tethering between the two or more machines can now easily use custom uh, encryptions. So you can you can now easily use app tethering to extend your VCL and FireMonkey desktop apps, user interfaces, their data, and control to other desktop, mobile, and wearable devices using either network Wi-Fi, Ethernet, or Bluetooth Classic. With app tethering, you can now use it to build these connected apps to add to a distributed Internet of Things solution. So we see it today. We're surrounded by all of these gadgets and wearables. So there's all these kinds of Internet of Things devices that we can now connect uh, to using Rad Studio. Uh, so the coolest thing you can do this is if you have all these nice existing legacy Windows VCL applications, you can breathe new life into these Windows apps by extending these Windows VCL and FireMonkey apps, and you can connect them to all these different types of uh, devices, sensors, data, and, and services. If you're just not familiar with app tethering, let me go over these two main components, the tethering manager, and the other one is called the tethering app profile. And these tethering components, they follow the Bluetooth profile model. So there's a main component and then a profile that implements the functionality. So this tethering manager, this is the component that manages all basic operations, such as auto discovering and pairing with other remote managers. And then the tethering app profile, it implements the application profile. So it's a set of functionality that includes executing remote actions, sharing resources, and sending streams and strings between other uh, paired profiles. So a manager needs to register a profile to start. So you need to drop both a tethering manager component and a tethering app profile component on your VCL or FireMonkey form, and then link both components, filling in the manager property in the profile component. And if you haven't looked at it yet, uh, in a few seconds, I'm going to show you as many of these examples as I have time for. Uh, inside of Rad Studio, it comes with these really nice app tethering examples to show all the cool functionality in app tethering. So I'm going to show you this database shopping list application where you can share data resources between paired profiles. There's a nice media player app that shows app tethering executing remote actions like pushing the play button or the stop button or the volume control button using remote control between paired apps. There's a nice desktop cast app that shows sending screens and actions to other paired apps. And the last one is this photo wall app that shows app tethering sending streams between other paired profiles. So let's take a look at some of these cool app tethering examples. First one I want to show you is uh, 
is an app dethering app called it's a chat room app so i'm gonna fire it up so let's say this is me here in new york city and we have david running the same app in california and let's say we have jim he's in uh idaho and we got nick who's in virginia we're all running the same app and we're all logging in so i log in as me uh david logs in as he and as you see as we're logging in each of the individual apps has its own uh unique id so it can be uniquely identified uh, by all the other connected apps and as we're logging in we see where we're sharing data resources between each other and here is going to be jim jim logs in and finally uh, nick logs in What's nice about app dethering, right? In this case, you know, we, it's only one app, so there's no concept of a, of a client and a server. So each one can be a client, each one can be a server, and they can all just communicate among themselves. So, so for me over here, I can say, send a message, hello from New York City, post it, and everybody gets that message. David from California, hello from CA, and then we got Jim, hello and Nick in his state of Pennsylvania from PA. So by doing this, this was an example of being able to share data among other tethered apps. So you can see all the messages that got received and all the posts that got created. All right, so that was one example of using app tethering uh, to share data between other connected apps. This is a VCL application. Uh, that keeps track of, of products and the amount of stock in there. Then anytime a product is below its minimum stock, we want to send a, a notification uh, to the connected companion debtor apps and give these people the option of, uh, of ordering new products. So this could be me here in New York City. And let's say we have David out in California. Multiple folks can be connected to this app. So I'm going to take my remote companion app and connect it to this uh, database app. And it sends me this shopping list of, of items that need to be reordered. So that's me in New York. And David could be in California doing the same thing. So we're out there in the field whatever, doing whatever we're doing. And we see, uh, we see we get this shopping list sent to our mobile devices. So here, I here in New York says that this one product needs 1,000 more units. So I can click the, the buy 100. And we see that that resource gets sent to the, the central database app and it executes the buy command to buy another 100. All of the connected client apps get the refresh. And let's say David here in California sees he needs to buy 100 more of, of this product. He selects it. The resource gets sent to the app tethered app and the, the buy command goes in for that. And all of the uh, connected apps receive the update too. Another example of sending uh, data value across apps. Well, I mean, here, these are the uh, two components we add onto the form, right? Is a tethering manager component. It's easy to see on here. The two main components are a uh, tethering manager component and a tethering profile component. And all of these components is where we can create the, the resources. So the shopping list, how it gets sent between the connected tethered apps is we created a resource course shopping list. It's got a resource type of data. And then any time that resource changes from the profile, there's an event that says on resource received. So anytime we, we receive a new resource, we, we update the inventory when we put the order in to purchase another 100 units of that product. Let's take a look at another sample that sends streams. So what photo wall does is on, a, on our Windows clients, we have this photo wall here where external clients, mobile clients can take pictures and then forward those uh, photos to our photo wall here. Here's our desktop app running. It's companion photo wall app. I called it my, my mobile photo app. And this I have deployed to my Android device. So there's the mobile photo app. Uh, I can take a picture. Let's just take a picture of the picture. So it likes that picture. And then we see here, uh, it did app tethering and it knows there's a remote VCL app out there. So I'm gonna select this photo wall to send it to. And then we see that remote companion app that took the picture, sent it to my window app by sending streams across it. So that's an example of using app tethering to send streams uh, between tethered apps. 
And the last app I want to show is uh, to be able to execute remote actions. So to execute remote actions, I'm going to bring up a media player. So here's a, a media player high def. This could be my daughter playing her Taylor Swift videos on her on her Windows box, and she's playing it really loud, and I'm starting to get annoyed at the sound. So let me find a video to play here. So I don't have Taylor Swift here, but if I did, I would. Is a Windows media player. I'm just going to pause it here. And then let's say I have a remote uh, a remote companion app where I can control the, the playing and the stopping and the volume of this app. I also have that deployed to an Android device that I call Media Player and bring up that Media Player app. Media Player Command. So there's the app. So first I want to click the button that says Find a Player. So it does the uh, UDB broadcast to find the tethered apps and there I am. I select it. So now that I have it, if I push the, uh, the play and the pause button, you'll see I can control it this way. If I use my Android device and I lower the, uh, the volume control from the Android device, you'll see that it lowers it here also. So very cool. Another, another example of how you can use app tethering to execute remote controls by you know, pushing buttons or, or moving trackbars. Right. There's all other kinds of cool things you can do with app tethering too. Uh, you can take like Bluetooth enabled devices. So I, I think last month they did this rad in action internet of things where I took a Bluetooth enabled heart rate monitor and then we created these companion apps. So anytime heart rate beats per minute exceeded some threshold using app tethering, we could send that data to other connected apps to inform the healthcare provider or your, uh, or your health cl club individual that you know, your, your heart rate is longer than it needs to be. And then there's some real world applications out there. So some people ask, you know, uh, I, I like app tethering, but I, I need some ideas on, on what I can do with app tethering. So there are some really cool apps that have been created out there. Like there's a mobile barcode scanning app tethers to desktop. And this uses mobile barcode scanning and processing via specific phone apps with barcode data that gets forwarded to a VCL warehouse management application. Uh, there's a great medical mobile imaging app for doctors with a VCL management app. It uses mobile phones or tablets to take pictures of patients' conditions and then sends the images to dedicated app tethered VCL apps. Uh, there's a remote device camera app uh, to desktop or different mobile devices. And, and I showed you this chat room app. That's a nice example of using a chat room uh, by using app tethering. There was a question about, and I'll think this one's for you, or I can answer it. It says, with app tethering and data sharing, how hard is it for a device to be de temporary off the network to catch up, and who's responsible for that? Uh, that's a good question. So the program, right? <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to say yes because now we we use UDP for the broadcast to find out who's available that we can share and uh, and connect to, and then data and streams are sent over TCP/IP. Uh, if so, we we will know we'll know everyone who's connected. Everyone will have a unique uh, GUID on who's connected. So we have the IP address and the port of who's connected to us. So we can keep track of that. So yes, I think you constantly got to keep pinging uh, to see if that if that tethered app is still connected, and if they're not connected, well, we need to reestablish that connection. So that's yep. a good example. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that as a homework assignment to come up with an example of that. I'll create a couple of uh, create a couple of tethered apps and have them uh, go offline and. And we'll have to just save all the data and the streams. And once we come back to being reconnected, push all that information back out again. You should get a uh, event when it disconnects. Or if not, you'll probably get one error message when you try and send a message to a disconnected uh, peer. Yeah, you get, you get connected and disconnected. I remember events for those on, on connect and disconnect. But, um, Correct. Yeah. Um, there's a question here about Bluetooth LE and app tethering. Um, again, on the screen, when I put it up earlier, and I can put it up, uh, I think it's up there again. Hopefully that's showing up, Al. Um, those are the platforms that we support, so classic Bluetooth. 
and TCP IP, whether that's through Ethernet or Wi-Fi or whatever. Those are the so settings. So and yes, to do the answer. Bluetooth on iOS, you have to sign an agreement with Apple for whatever reason. All right, so the question on can app tethering be used with Bluetooth LE to connect a Windows PC with an iPhone? Yes, so if you're using Bluetooth LE, uh, uh, Windows PC. We won't go over Bluetooth LE, it goes over Bluetooth Classic. Right? For, let me see here, Bluetooth Classic. Maybe I'm mistaken. Oh, yes. Correct. Yeah, you could, you could use Bluetooth LE to communicate between the two, but you could not use tethering over Bluetooth LE. Bluetooth LE does not have enough bandwidth for app tethering, because app tethering supports streams like uh, pictures and stuff. That's correct. And it's TCP IP port for the UDP 2020 to 2040. I remember my range is correct. And then somebody's saying that the link to the mobile barcode scanner URL doesn't seem to work, so we'll have to track that down. Okay. You know, pages come and go uh, over time. Uh, can the ports be configured in components? Not the range for UDP. At least I don't remember that you can configure the ports. Uh, for TCP, once you're connected, you can you can connect via an IP address, but the the broadcast and discovery has to do something. And I think I think it's hard coded as 2020 to 2040, but I'll uh, I'll double check. Now uh, the app tethering RTL source code is included if you have a, a paid version, not the trial or a starter edition. If you have a professional and above, so there's I don't remember a property setting. Maybe there's something you can do in code, but uh, uh, look at RTL source code. I don't remember anything. There's no properties that are published or methods that I know of. On the TCP IP side, once you you can either direct connect, you don't have to do discovery. Again, the ports 2020 to 2040 are just for discovering uh, other tether apps that are out there via UDP, UDP broadcast. If you know the target app's IP address, then that was added, I think, what, at XE8L, you can put in a specific IP address and connect to that tethered app. That's correct. So now we can go outside of the subnet and you can put in specific IP addresses or a, a subnet of IP addresses. There's a method where you can just connect directly and pass it a TCP IP address. Okay. Let's see. Application is peer-to-peer -peer service point of sale. I'm keen to get this going with app tethering rather than just custom code. Okay, that's a great example. Great example and again, yeah. you can connect direct. You can have a list of IP addresses of your targets and just uh, connect direct to each one of them. Yeah. There's another, there's another sample I've seen. I'm not sure if maybe I should make it available. Maybe the, I think we still ship. Do we still ship the uh, the VCL, uh, the asteroids, the meteorite game uh, in, inside the VCL code? I'm not sure because some things were pulled out. You can go and find it on SourceForge in some of the older releases. Yeah. So we, we so we took that we took that uh, we took that and we we fa re refactor it for uh, Red Studio 10 Seattle and we created a uh, a remote uh, mobile companion app that use that use as a remote control. So you can have the nice asteroid game working on some nice large Windows PC, and then you can have it on your remote tethered app on Android or iOS that lets you move right, left, fire, thrust. So that's a cool way of a, of extending that game, giving it new life. Yeah, for for me, I you know firing actions, reusing actions over app tethering. It's just awesome. You know, if you've got actions in your VCL app or FireMonkey app and you want to run a mobile device and you want to have those actions versus doing something else, you just say I want to execute the, the tethered action and, and it's all good. That's right. That meter app is a great example of that. So we have the actions of right, pushing the button right, pushing the button left, pushing the button to fire, pushing the button to thrust. Yeah. Great use I, of uh, app tethering. Yeah, the metaphor was like your remote control right on your stereo or your TV set. Exactly. 
uh, and whatever that device might be. Okay, with, with that we're going to move along. We'll keep handling the questions uh, in the background. Those are all the app tethering questions for now. Um, and I should mention, well, I should mention one other thing. Let's let me about app tethering because somebody was talking about sort of uh, bandwidth or local, a lot of local network traffic. Uh, if you are going to do discovery, depending on how busy your network is, you'll want to make sure to set the time out to a longer period of time when you're out there broadcasting and listening for a, a, a tethered app to respond back. So uh, we don't tune that over time, you just need to set it. I think the default was, what, two and a half seconds? Either one uh, and a half? That sounds seconds. correct. Yeah, two and a half seconds. Uh, here inside when I was doing some demos and we had a lot of network traffic on TCP IP, uh, I was setting it to five seconds, ten seconds. That's just for discovery. Again, once you know, you're connected, then it's a direct connection. It, it connects up the two over either Bluetooth or uh, or TCP IP, and for Bluetooth, you'll want to give a lo little bit longer if you have a whole bunch of Bluetooth devices, classic Bluetooth devices as well. So, and if you have concerns about UDP traffic on your local network, just use the uh, specific IP address to, to discover it. Instead. So just yeah. hard code the IP addresses. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, set a long discovery period. Yeah. But uh, direct is uh, is absolutely easy to do. Let's see. Uh, would tethering allow communicating between a service and a foreground application? Well, I mean, tethering is between two different two applications. Whether those those applications can be on the same machine, could be a VCL and FireMonkey on a Windows machine or an OS X machine. Uh, so, you know, any combinations. I, I I think about if it's like a a Windows service application, but I don't see why it couldn't tether. Yeah, I agree. I can't see why that yeah. would not work. We can do it on a local machine. I mean, that's some of the sample establish on our local machine. I'd probably, if you're on the same machine, though, your best bet would probably be something like named pipes, though, honestly. Yeah, for but, speed. Yeah. Tethering is, you know, it's so easy to use. So I guess if you want to, you could do, go ahead and do that. 